that might just fuck it up. I actually. think that might have. Yeah, you'll we'll still see. see it. You can still find the spot. It'll be okay. How you doing, Cody? Good. A little tired today. I feel like, but I'm tired today. I don't know. I'm definitely tired today. Still fine. I it's forgot my lunch for oh. work. I was pissed. <laughs> but turn around, we ended up getting lunch brought. Oh, into the office, so. that's clutch. It was a lose win, which ended up just being really nice, actually. So I was pretty stoked about that. Do you like your new UPS schedule? Yeah, I mean it's fine. It is what it is. It's UPS. It's, but it's now you gotta crazy. like wake up. I mean, annoying. no, I hate waking up in well, the so much every I, day. I, I'm not a no, I'm not a morning person. No, at all. Fuck and no. But I'm I'm doing better at it. It's not hard for me to adjust to my sleep schedule where it used to be terrible, and I could just sleep as long as I wanted, and it made no difference. I hate that feeling. It's not fun. So yeah, getting back to just a normal like yeah, I wake up. I, have alarm set for like 7 a.m so yeah it, it does make you when you have a routine believe it like i don't know i've just experienced this from like covid stuff of being unemployed but when you have a routine and a job even if you even if you don't like it i get more shit done yeah i just do because even if i am forced to wake up in the morning even if i hate it every fucking time it's okay because at the end of the day i feel like i want to do stuff whereas i if i don't do anything during the day like during covid and you're unemployed I wake up I sleep, sleep till like 11 or yeah. 12 and then wake up and be like, well, I can't do anything today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's watch YouTube. Let's play a video game. Let's watch a movie. I can't do anything. Yeah, as much as this is a movie watching slash TV show slash video game slash whatever the hell we want to be podcast, yeah. I sometimes get, well, it's very easy to get drained out on like, I'm just sitting here doing nothing <laughs> for two hours. I don't know. And sometimes, like when we play pickleball on the occasional Saturday morning, it's like yeah. perfect way to start a Saturday. I yeah. end up being up early, yeah. out and about, outside, doing something active, get super hot and sweaty and gross, but then immediately it's feel good. like I need, I like feel like I have to do more things because I'm yeah. already going. But yeah, the sleep in and watch a movie or YouTube all day. And then at night, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do the dishes. I'm not going to clean stuff <laughs> in my house. But oddly enough, when I come home from work, I do that stuff. It's very weird. I do. I think like the first thing you do in the day, like my mindset of if you wake up and like, I don't know, you smoke weed all the time. If the first thing <laughs> yeah. you do when you wake up is smoke, like odds day are smoked. you're not doing much for the you day. You smoke in the morning, your day smoke. You kind of just told yourself you wouldn't. And yeah. so, yeah, j- getting up and immediately being like, all right, take a shower, just wake up, get ready, go do a shift at work, and then come home, get stuff done at home. Way easier than I would if I did nothing prior. But I also have a pretty physical job at least where I, I yeah, like nice. that uh, aspect of it, that I do like – I don't know, labor, and it feels good by the end of the shift where you're like, well, all right, I did something today at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes it, may, it makes a big difference. It's, it's kind of crazy, but I fucking hate waking up every single morning. I mean... It sucks. It's such a... It's uh, the... <laughs> when we went to Canada, I had my bad morning, which was instigated by me forgetting my phone in <laughs> a cab the night before, so I was very angry about not having my phone and not knowing if I'd get my phone, but everyone kind of got a little taste of like, if I'm in a bad mood and then that happens in the morning <laughs> and we're on a trip and we're going to be leaving that day, it was just all the things to be like, oh, I'm so, I'm so mad at the world. I'm mad at everything more than anything, mad at myself for losing my phone, obviously, but I'll, uh, I can take it out on everyone else around me in the morning for sure. See, I'm not like that in the morning when I wake up. It's just, just the process of waking up. I have yeah. such a hard, and I'm a super light sleeper, so I wake mm-hmm. up super easily, but I hate getting out of bed so much. It is such a challenge for me yeah. every time. It's just snooze button like 10 times in the morning. It's crazy. I, I mean, I snooze a lot. I mean, we live together at least for a little bit. And you so just sleep fucking hard. You, do, yeah, you know that I'm a, a heavy sleeper, a very heavy sleeper through anything. If I like, Once I'm in a deep sleep, I'm just gone until my body decides it's ready to go. <laughs> no, I'll is. sleep through alarms. This has nothing to do with being a light sleeper or heavy sleeper, but it just made me think of this. So there's one time when Sydney was staying over and I had the air conditioner just blasting. Um, I have a window air conditioner. So, you know, if it gets a little too cold out, outside at night or if the air conditioner is running too hard, it freezes. Uh, which I didn't know that it froze. I thought that it just didn't work properly, but it cr- makes icicles and little ice balls inside the fucking air conditioner. So we were sleeping and I was like kind of half awake. It was a rough night of sleep. 
and I hear the the air conditioner making a little clickety clack noise. I'm like, oh fuck, the air conditioner's breaking. But I was too lazy to get up and get out of bed because I was half asleep. And then all of a sudden it goes like, and I get up and I turn on the light and I look down there and Sydney's dog Diamond just got blasted by all these ice cubes oh, down no. on the ground. And she's like, what the fuck? Dude? She's just Little looking up. And look blizzard in the room on yeah, the dog. Yeah. So she was just, <laughs> Sydney. Sydney's like, oh, what the, was half awake, didn't even know what happened either so it was just it was pretty funny nice. <laughs> i was like damn i didn't know my air conditioner sh- could shoot out ice cubes at me that's pretty crazy so it was fun though kind of a house defense system if you need it <laughs> i guess pretty yeah, sick. yeah if you could speed it up a little bit <laughs> um i want to talk about lord of the rings because i watched lord of the rings oh basically the whole trilogy oh <laughs> on saturday okay. so <laughs> i don't know if i brought this up in this podcast i think i have but i watch a streamer called bruce green who does um uh, Drinking movie streams or just general bad movie streams. He calls it bad movie streams, which is not. There's one. Yeah, there's one little there one. Go. Yeah, uh, he does. He does drinking movie streams or just bad movie streams, as he calls them. Uh, usually every Saturday night, and sometimes I'll watch along with them. Uh, I went so low. I don't know. I know. You're, you're super it's low. Just, I, <laughs> Whatever. I'm that's what you here. want. I like that's it. fine. Oh, well. Uh, but Amazon Prime used to have this thing. They used to have watch parties, watch alongs. Did you do you even watch any Twitch streamers really? No, but I think I get it. Netflix used to have it on Xbox where you could like be in a party watching something together kind of thing. Yeah. Well, what was cool about it is it's a Twitch I guess it's kind of similar to that, but it's a it's a Twitch specific thing where you can uh watch a streamer and then they can stream a movie from Amazon Prime because gotcha. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Uh-huh. And then they decided, oh, we're not making money from this or we can't monetize this. So they just got rid of it and it just fucked over every, everybody <laughs> so quick. <clears throat> so they quit doing it and they got rid of it. It was really annoying. So now he still does them, but you have to pull up Amazon Prime separate and open two separate tabs so you can like only really do it on a, uh, on a PC, I'm on a desktop. I'm fucking around with this. Yeah, what's going on, man? I don't know. It's being a dickhead right now. But there <laughs> we he's go. having a lot of issues with his fucking microphone <laughs> and his chair and everything. Now nah, we're good. So they got rid of it. So now he does it where you have to open up separate tabs to watch Amazon Prime and then watch a stream if you want to watch along with the streamer. But Um, anyways, he did the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He does like big movie um, series every once in a while. Like he usually likes to do all of the Twilights in Ah. October um, for spooky season. (laughs) I've seen the first Twilight Um, a lot, I think. Yeah, I've seen them more. I, I watched them all for the first time like from start to finish a couple of years ago. Cause I went on a vampire kick cause of this book series that I was reading and I, man, those movies are horrible, but, yeah. but anyways, <laughs> we don't need to dive into fucking twilight right now. Let's talk about a good trilogy, Lord of the Rings. Uh, but he watched that whole thing, Theat- theatrical release, which dude, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen the theatrical release. And granted, I kind of have this every single time I watch Lord of the Rings, but I swear there's a scene that I haven't seen every time I watch Lord of the Rings, but the theat- theatrical hit me a little bit more because I think I always watch extended, and I can't even name any of them off the top of my head. But I I have like a trippy like in a different dimension feeling sometimes when I watch Lord of the Rings because <laughs> I see these scenes and I'm like I just for the love of me do not remember this being in the movie at all, and it just it like just, I can't think of one. <laughs> it, it, they're, they're just they're just in the moment things where it's I don't even know if it's necessarily a scene, but it's a couple of lines that oh, somebody okay. says. And I'm like. Kind of like that feeling where you know, like, I've watched these or seen these so many times. And yeah. then if something you hear that doesn't sound yeah. recognizable, you're like, has that just been here the whole time? And yeah. I never knew till now. Yeah. And so it just fucked me up. So I basically watched the entire trilogy of Lord of the Rings on Saturday, which was pretty sick. I haven't done that in a minute. didn't rewatch all of them. We uh, Only other than Two Towers Halfway, yeah. the one time when we were together. But my brother was telling me about how he just watched... Lord of the Rings for the first time with his wife, who she had never really no seen them all the way through. And my brother's like a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. Like me, that's probably the only reason I'm as big of a fan. And I kind of got a good walkthrough again, at least. It, not that I don't know it, but like three really long movies with a ton of story. I have to remember the beats every time. But yeah. it's good to know when I go from... If you just go from the start of Fellowship, it's like I can, I can hit every point along the way, but I have to go from start to finish. When I go straight into a movie in the middle, I'm like... Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. <laughs> this is a lot. This is tough because Lord of the Rings thrives as a trilogy. So, yeah. like, if you're not watching part of it, you're missing the whole the whole fucking story. That's why they right. didn't make them separately. They filmed all three of them at the same time because they were like, "This is the only way we are going to make this happen." That's you have the to way. See it, that's, the end. that's the way it should be, especially 
I don't I don't know if you could ever do it like they did with the amount of money and hype and how it bridged the gap for so many like the CGI still holds up so well in so many regards just I think the artistic design of so many aspects of the movie where you can get away with not having like the Balrog it still holds up really well watching it in the scenes even the scene in two towers with the beginning Gandalf and the Balrog fighting so, so I was like this is anime full, fight. like CGI it still looks really good still holds up really well I don't know if you could do it like that again I'm as trying big to, I'm trying to think though because I know that the second two Back to the Future movies same, filmed at the same time I know that there's some other movie trilogies or however long the it's series is that have done with the back like filmed at the same time yeah, the it's whole a series. volatile in- industry it's like it is. You, if you don't make it big on your first go you're canned and there's so many shows that are gone after a season so many movies that maybe they had an elongated like dc's just been trying and trying to so, make something happen but they just can't figure it out like they no. need to well we'll see james gunn hasn't started his yeah, universe yet hopefully yeah but uh oh i totally lied. oh didn't, didn't so they had allocated like a billion dollars to Rings of Power because my thought process at the beginning, I thought that they had like filmed the whole show. I don't think so. Which would be pretty insane, but I don't think so. But how how is it a billion dollars then? What does that mean? A billion dollars for the one season? Because I don't think that's true. Oh, don't ask me that much in depth. I would say it was probably like investment wise fronted. <laughs> like, hey, we have a billion dollars worth of money we can give to you, assuming this does good. And we can keep funding things as long as things are going good. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's the only way it works. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't understand where that billion number came from then if the whole show wasn't like... I mean, it, it is a cool number to also put on like a headline big, and be like, number. hey, this is a crazy expensive show, but it can bite you in the ass. I, think, the I think it was bad. I think that was a bad marketing ploy. I don't think you should come out and brag about being the most expensive thing of all time because then you have to look like the most expensive thing of all time. And yeah. when you don't, you're going to get shit on. It's that thing where like you go into movies... And you go and see a bad movie, but you had really low expectations. So you go in and your expectations are lower than what you see. And you come out being like, that movie was pretty good. I had a good time. Or maybe not yeah. pretty good, but like, I had a good time watching that movie. That was fun. Or yeah. the opposite, where like, somebody's hyped this movie up so much. And you're like, this is going to be the best thing you've ever seen. You go in and you're like, it was fine. Yeah. It's just- I, I, especially with Lord of the Rings, always have to tell people, where I'm like, this is one of my favorite anythings ever. Yeah. I love it so much. I'm so into all the, like, the world building and the lore and all the nerdy stuff if you want to get like way more into it. And I'm not, I don't know as much as the next guy necessarily, but I like Lord of the Rings enough to actually know the characters, keep up with all the stuff, keep up with more of the backstory than some casual viewer might want to. But I've watched a decent amount of YouTube. Of yeah, and, and YouTube stuff here. Dozens. If, I, if it helps me out because I just think it's cool. I've always thought it's cool. And like the way it's done in such a grand scale. I don't know. Like like I've said, Dune compares to how I feel with Lord of the Rings. Just the scale of like, man, this is big. Everything's mm-hmm. big. It's so grand. When you see an army, it's an actual big-ass army ready to go yeah. out and fight. And when Theoden comes out for his speech, that doesn't hit unless you get the shots of him literally riding across like hundreds of guys on a horse like going down <laughs> yeah. it's so sick and you're getting pumped get like the horn of gondor in there he's yelling as loud as he can and they even still get the feeling of like the guys out here can't really hear you that's how big this army is no There's, you got to just let it you trickle you just like you can only hear him as much as you can they know what's going on though and it's just i i want that to happen so badly again dune has gotten the closest if not getting that to that point like with the the third one coming out and in a completely different sci-fi it's, versus yeah, fantasy it's thing different. It's, it's different so yeah it's not completely just straight across comparable but with scale and how they're like showing just size like the emperor's ship the sandworms the scale of the desert itself matches like middle earth how they show the monsters the and trolls, all the, the trolls, dragons, every the yeah, all of the big fantasy stuff is all done. I don't know with the sense of like taking it serious. I think you can sometimes tell when people in a movie aren't bought in to the character. I think I've seen like <laughs> yeah. Ian McKellen himself, Gandalf, has said on record like through st- like you have to buy into the character. Like, why do people love my Gandalf? Because I was Gandalf. Like, yeah. I'm not Ian McKellen playing Gandalf. I am Gandalf. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I, I kind of, I'm not an actor, but I think I get it. Like, you'd really have to fully commit I get and it. go all the way in to be like, yeah. 
believing this character's ideals. Like, you wouldn't do it, but it's the character themselves wanting to do it. That's what I'm trying to do with D&D, but it's just... It's hard, it's isn't it? It's hard. You kind of learn that it's not easy to stay into a character kind of thing. and Because you still think of as you. You want to <laughs> logically think, and even that, like, we play a game, and it's a game, so there's, like, kind of rules at times, but there really isn't, and... You want to stay within a boundary to make it fun, but at the same time, if you let everyone go crazy, there has to be some way to funnel people in a yeah. little bit, and it's hard. But like staying in character, doing things in character, really hard. Going back to the scale thing of Lord of the Rings, it's when I was a kid, pretty young, six ish, probably six and to maybe like twelve or something. I would go into movies and get excited about fantasy movies because I wanted to see thousands millions of men and whatever they're fighting on a giant battlefield from the sky because yeah. <laughs> it's fucking sick as you get older you realize that lord of the rings cool it has a you get you get to learn about the production and the actors and all the behind the scenes stuff and learn more about the world and the story but when you watch it as a kid you're watching it to watch these giant ridiculous insane fucking battles and dune has that too but it's totally different it's not like yeah. They don't do a, a thing where they show like a crazy amount of numbers and bodies, but they show a crazy amount, like a crazy amount of scale and objects and things interacting in there with the worms yeah. and the ships and the people and the bases and stuff. The ship warfare kind of helps. Yeah. Like they have to go even bigger to yeah. get those in picture. Yeah. Whereas in Lord of the Rings, it's like you got, you got Gondor and then you can like kind of see Mordor when you're in the final battle in Return of the King and you can see, and I just love when you scale out and you get to see, they show the... I mean, that's Helm's Deep too, but they just show the they show the little the up close version of just all the horses and everything running into each other, and the music cuts off as soon as they hit hit each other. So it's just everything smacking into each other, and mm-hmm. it's fucking awesome. But then they do the pan out where they show the horses just running a train through all the orcs and just <laughs> plowing them down, and they're just, it's just like they're just deleting this half of orcs and you're looking <laughs> at it from the sky, and then they have to like turn and line up to fight the, the is it elephants. I think that's just what they're called. The elephants in there have Ol- a weird like uh, elephants. Yeah, they yeah. have a weird name. But yeah, basically they, elephant. <laughs> yeah, I know. Why is it like just, <laughs> just, a, just just a pinch different? Just because why not? Yeah, I, I guess. But yeah, and then when they have to line up to fight the fight the elephants, it's so sick. The ghost thing I always thought was kind of dumb. It's like, oh, this is just a cheat code, and they just kind of go in and just. And just I mean, that's fuck that's kind of the point. It is the point. You got to end it. Some you got. Well, it was supposed to be impossible. Like Aragorn's the only million the, orcs. Ar- 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 Aragorn's the only guy who can like actually get those men and their souls to rest by getting them to come fight for their like everything. He is the true king of Gondor. He is the heir. He is like the the only person who could do it. So it kind of is a cheat code cuz when they show up, it's the whole like you can't This fight wasn't them. supposed to happen. We like you're not supposed to be able to have this army come. They don't answer to anyone. Well, they answered Aragorn because he's fucking Aragorn. And when they show up and he hops out the boat and they just storm in. They're just so OP. It does <laughs> feel crazy. OP, but I, I think that's... There's only so many movies that can get away with, like, you bid, you build up all of this, but it's like it's not, like, the ultimate, like, just because of the Ghost Army. I think that's the key is it's only one part in a massive... Like, so many moving pieces in a plan that have to work out in order for Frodo and Sam to make it up Mount Doom safely and get the ring into the volcano. Yeah. Like having Aragorn's amazing at the, at the foot of the black gate about to rush in. Why couldn't the ghost help them with that? Don't ask. <laughs> if you ask what those kind fuck? of questions, we'll never be like every the, movie. will never the Eagle one is stretched. Cause I'm like, Oh, whatever. I don't That's care about the, the Eagle thing, but the ghosts are right there next to him. And then they like go over into mortar. They can't just go finish. No, uh, the, the I haven't wa- and I haven't watched it in, in enough, and I would be curious to rewatch and be like, if I have any more of an idea of why that would happen. But the, no, there's nothing. Either way, the <laughs> the Eagles is always the like, wait, what the fuck? Wait, why now? And I've always seen it as like it's like an angelic presence that is only called upon when absolutely needed. Yeah, and, and that makes sense to me. But is. even just going from a physical thing, like they have the Nazgul, like they, yeah, they couldn't just block them and fuck them up with the Nazgul. Like, I don't think it would be a quick, easy thing to just go and drop th- them off at the volcano. They got, well, Nazgul. I think once the ring goes in, isn't it game over? But there's like that one entrance to go in there. Yeah. You put a couple of Nazgul in there and then have them patrol around. Well, they didn't know. Try to They're in. too busy fighting everyone else down on the ground. I, I guess. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. You're a distraction. He freaking Aragorn gets his sword up and looks back and he goes for Frodo. For Frodo. And runs out, <laughs> just sword in hand into a mass army of people to get 
what feels like decimated. But that shot doesn't look too great still. That it's one's kind of a little it's very CGI. like green screen CGI. Yeah. It's like you can tell it's like just Aragorn like 100%. running into like a screen. But um, but it's twenty five years old and over 20. when you're fully bought into the story though, and yeah, you're like matter. everyone's like yes for Frodo and Sam, we got to distract like you'd only call it out as really bad if the movie sucked, and you're like. Well, I wasn't like I didn't care about that moment. It sucked. Like I, but it's not bad either. It's just yeah, exactly. It's just old. It's it's, dated. You can tell it's a little dated. Yeah. yeah, but Lord of the Rings only works because of how long is it? I mean, at least theatrical nine hours. Throughout, theatrical is almost ten hours. Yeah, nine to ten hours throughout the course of three movies. Yeah, <laughs> it you have to commit in, and if you're not in it by the first movie, it's like well, you probably won't like the second I two. I don't think Sydney would like him. Has she never seen them? She hasn't seen any nerdy thing. She hasn't seen Star Wars. She hasn't <laughs> seen Marvel. She hasn't seen, like, and, and nothing. No Lord of the Rings. No, none of those things. I mean, and Lord of the Rings is definitely a male-centered audience, I would say. Yeah. For, well, for the actual viewer, it's geared towards a guy's, like, ideal fantasy movie. And it's, <laughs> That's so, sure. it's so high fantasy. Not in the sense that everybody's magic. There's a little bit of magic stuff, but it's so high fantasy of hobbits and dwarves and a different world and different names and hard story yeah. to follow. And if it's not the big, epic, crazy, insane battles that everybody, I think, would enjoy if they watched it, it's pretty hard to follow because there's the joke of Lord of the Rings. It's like, it's just people running. Like uh, yeah. It's just them running. Well, yeah, it's a hero's journey. You got to yeah. get to the fucking yeah. mountain. Which How else do you get there? <laughs> yeah, but you get these amazing, awesome spectacle shots of New you Zealand. You get the cool, yeah, you, you get character arcs that are real. Baromir's story is one of my favorites in all of the movies. Go. And you only get it from the Fellowship. But you get a character who actually gets a little bit of backstory throughout the other movies, throughout like little glimpses of like flashbacks and yeah. Faramir coming into play to cool. give the real story of how their father treats both of them. Baromir's a great, like such a good character arc where he starts super noble. He wants to do the right thing, is quickly corrupted by the power of the ring He's in front of everyone's eyes. And he knows it. He fucked up and he has to own up to it. He does. And in his last willing moment, he sacrifices himself for the fucking hobbits. Yeah. Like a G. He takes yeah. like seven arrows from the <laughs> Urukai. <laughs> It's so sick. I always think it's, it's way so more, sick. but it takes three it's in there. Sa- it takes so long, it feels like It does, like it does take so And it's just either way, taking all three of the arrows to his chest and just letting it happen, it's like, it could be so corny. In most other movies, I'd be like, this is so lame. Why has he not died yet? But in this, you're like, no, no. Baromir doesn't just die. No, he takes have a He takes at least death. three arrows yeah. before he finally gives in to death taking him. And it's like, ah. Uh, he's so, Aragorn gets one moment with him. To be like it to get the confirmation, even that like, hey, I'm sorry, I messed up, but go finish the job. It's fucked up because like, no! Bor- Boromir in the moment is like, I failed. I'm gonna die. Our realm's gonna all this blah blah blah. And he does, Ar- yeah. And then Aragorn like tells him like, hey, I'm I'm the I'm the heir. I'm the king. We're gonna and do Bor- this. Boromir's like, oh shit, let's go. It's sick. It's so he's Takes a sword. he believes like it's done. I'm I failed. It's all over. And Aragorn gets to be like, look. It's not over. Don't let and the this isn't, like and, that. and that's not for nothing. What you have done is so heroic and it's going to get us further. And not only that, we will more than like, we are in the boat of coming out on top. Like we're believing it. So we got, someone's got to go. Barmir is such a good character. Sean Bean also is amazing. Always is. They're, 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 they're all good. All the casting that's nailed. The that's yeah. The it's so everybody. In, and it's such a big cast too. Cause that's without it's even massive. talking about like the elves at all, or yeah. just everybody in every different, in every different city. Um, I actually was watching a YouTube video, so I w- I'll tell you about the uh, a couple of YouTube videos that I watched about Lord of the Rings after watching it. Cause I just always have to every time. Uh, but I watched a, I don't know if you know this, but like, there's always the question, like, what the fuck are the dwarves doing when the world of Middle Earth is supposed to yeah. be falling? Why is Gimli the only dwarf? Yeah, where are the dwarves? <laughs> you don't, you see like two other ones at the Fellowship at the, 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 True, the circle. True, yeah. You see a couple other there. A couple, I don't even know if they have lines. And you know, dialogue. you know that they were given rings. The beginning tells you that mm-hmm. dwarves were some of the people, a group that was given at least yeah. some of the rings. So those are the other only dwarves like you see of and, nobody but, in the main But even story. then, you don't really, like, yeah, you see them it's in, like a, a, mon- in a montage of, yeah. that takes five seconds to see, so you're like, yeah. they weren't there. So it's like, where the fuck are the dwarves? And, like, it, it kind of makes the world feel a little bit small. Not that it matters or takes anything away. It's just like, how big is Middle Earth? And they say that, like, the journey from Hobbiton to Mordor is, like, 42 miles, but then there's, like, other si- other continents and all this other blah, blah, blah bullshit. Doesn't matter for all what I'm bringing up, but... I don't remember if it was in the. Uh, I never remember how to say it. Simmerillion. Sim- Sim- uh, Simmerillion. Simmerillion. 
something like that. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember if it was in that or if it was another confirmed thing, but I guess the dwarves are fighting at the uh, at uh, the mines of Moria. No, not the mines of Moria. What the Lonely Mountain? What the fuck is yeah, that that's, called? What is there? Uh, the Lonely Mountain. I yeah, guess. there's, I know there's a Hobbit name. There's a the name. Place. There's a name for it too. Uh, and I guess they're fighting a whole different Orkai war with them while the Battle of Gondor is happening. Like this, like oh. it makes it really cool on the scale of everything because apparently there's several different giant fucking battles all happening at the same time as the one that we actually see in the movie. And I'm like, I want to see that just for fun. Just seems, give me a fan film. It seems like probably fighting. a we could <laughs> film this. Does it add enough to the story to put on screen? It would make it feel bigger. It would. I don't. I think that's like it's already so long as a trilogy. You it know, is. they had so many cuts that they were like, Ugh, we want this in. It would be awesome because it's in the story and it would add. But at the same time, with what are the story like what the movies show kind of nails it. I can yeah. I can see where they would obviously be, yeah they'd yeah. be like with what we have if we were to add that in shit now we got to add in like so much probably extra to lead into it to get to that to tie in you're, with the stuff maybe it's you're like, already ooh. adding more layers that I'm pretty sure Star Wars Star Wars kind of invented this and started this with uh, uh, Return of the Jedi when you have the multi pronged fight happening at the same time because I don't think movies had really done this before where you're fighting several different battles at the same time because mm-hmm. you have the Luke and the Emperor and Vader, and then you have the space battle, and then you have the battle on uh, Endor. Mm -hmm. So you have the three different uh, levels that you're all watching at the same time. Lord of the Rings has that, where it's like Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli with the ghosts, and then it has the uh, people in Gondor and showing Gandalf and um, yeah. Merry or Pippin. I never Return of the who. King is like yeah. so many groups doing so many, so many different things. Frodo and Sam, and then you yeah. have the Riders of Rohan, and then you have you just you it's have like, so many. So then you imagine you add in the fucking dwarves too, and then yeah. you add in maybe some elves that are fighting some shit too, and it's like, okay, this is just feels like twenty groups that have to end up meeting together at the end finally for yeah. a big battle. And it's too it, it'd be too, it's too much to watch. It's too much. Yeah, too many it, different levels. Like I yeah. think, I don't even remember. I haven't seen Battle of the Five Armies long enough, but I don't know. I just remember there being a lot going on there and crazy CGI that's, and the CGI dwarf. But I still li- loved it because I was ready to go see just giant armies of people fight. So I remember it's kind of chaotic. Five armies. It's definitely more chaotic feeling in terms of you just can't really tell what's happening a lot. Like no. you'll see cool stuff happening, but it's always like. Dude, but what does that matter? Just because I saw Legolas slide down the stairs on a shield doesn't mean yeah. that changes the tide of the battle. Or slide down an elephant trunk. Yeah, or <laughs> wa- walking up the breaking bricks in The Hobbit. As yeah, that like, one was wild. It's like, woo, okay. <laughs> like, just because I saw that and it was cool, it does not mean anything for what's happening on screen, no. I guess. So I think that's like tossing Gimli helps Go because... You have to toss me. It ties in perfectly. They had to. They were getting pinned in Helm's Deep, and they go out a little secret door. Very convenient, but still, like they pop out in a perfect spot. And he's like, "Well, you're gonna have to toss me," and they are able to I use it to, t- to kind of make like a little counterplay on him. It's like it it just works differently in context when you know these help. Legolas taking down an entire elephant just to get a joke for Gimli to say it still only counts as one. But he still took down a whole fucking elephant. He did. That's yeah. sick. That's a that it means a lot. That's huge. Yeah, it was dope. So that that leads to the other YouTube video that I watched, which which gets real nerdy. I watched a Battle of the Helms Deep tabletop fight. Oh, so they I did like a how it actually plays out. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know how these things work because I just saw the the thumbnail and I was like, oh, I want to see what that model looks like because they built Helms Deep on like a table like as big as all three of these tables put together here. It's really good to wear these headphones because you can hear yourself moving away and you can move back. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Who would have thought there's a reason people have these? Yeah. Uh, but it's it's it, the table could be bigger than this, but it is sick. It's like it's probably like ten feet wide, ten by ten feet. The mm-hmm. the whole castle structure of Helm's Deep is like three or four feet high. It's it's sick, and so I wanted to look at it because they do this whole crazy intro where they edit in rain and like shoot it from certain angles, so it looks it looks like you're actually in it and stuff. And Hell it's all yeah. these um, miniatures. I'm like. I've never understood because I've seen the miniature shit before. I don't know how this works. It kind of works like D and D. Um, granted, there's not like tiles or movement spaces like that. It's just an open plan. But they use they use tape measures and measure. They're like, oh, you can move five inches, and that's how they do it. So oh, like geez. a horse can move like eight inches. So they have to measure it and then they move it. And they had 500 fucking miniatures on this table for four people. So what they did is they basically, I think they probably only had like 40 miniatures for the Helms Deep people and then like 450 something for all of the Orakai. Good Lord. And yeah, so every time, so at the beginning, 
when the, the, the Hork dudes have to move all like 400 of their guys. Obviously, it's edited. Thank God. The video is still an hour long, though. <laughs> uh, so it's, so they move all of the Orc guys up, and they have to do it like two or three times before they even get to the wall. And the Helm's Deep people are just shooting them down. And you just roll dice for every individual miniature. Nice. So if you have like a big group of them, you take like 20 dice, and you just roll them all. And then like six kills or like four hits. And so you have to roll for hit, and then you have to roll for kill. That sounds terrible. Dude, it does. That sounds very... It was fun to watch edit it up and people that know exactly yeah, what they're doing. Yeah, as a video for me. Because it's, it's... Yeah, it definitely reminds me of D&D stuff, and I'm sure this is probably where it came from, because they kind of just make up their own rules. The way that yeah. they make the hero stronger is they give them might. So, like, if you roll a dice to kill them, they're like, okay, I have three might, I'm going to use one, I don't die yet. Like, right. it's, it's just... It, it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. It was fun to watch, though, because the set was so cool, and the, their their uh, miniatures were actually pretty dope, too. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, I went real nerdy, dove pretty deep into there. But they recreate certain things that happen. They have a whole section of the wall that blows up, and they have yeah. to run the bomb people up there. They have to do the whole toss Gimli and move Aragorn up there, jumping over the bridge yeah. thing. So they, they recreate all that stuff. And the goal is for the Helm's Deep people to hold out, like, 10 turns or something, because you take turns at Orc. Yeah. Uh, Helm's Deep. And then 10 turns until Gandalf gets down there. <laughs> until Gandalf can yeah. show up. And then Gandalf kind of smokes a ton of them, but the orc people ended up still winning because they blew up Gandalf. And if you like kill all the heroes, oh, you score a certain amount of points. You can't blow up Gandalf? I know, it changes at the end. That's like, not fair. That, know, they, that's not even... They that's blew just them up not historical. Yeah, that's just, it's not historical. It's literally accurate. impossible, I'd yeah. say. Nobody can just blow up Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, and it's not supposed to be historically accurate. It's just like you, you're you encouraged to like do the main uh, <laughs> The historically moments. accurate recreation of a fictional fantasy <laughs> battle <laughs> I know. yeah I get locked in. people get people get uptight about that shit man uh, that that is like the kind of like well i read the book and the battle was they were supposed to do this formation and stuff and i'm like if it looked cool i will i'll probably be okay some things aren't going to translate no screen like and, and like so. do you if you actually want to watch big big military movement like that there are movies that will show it i just don't think it's everyone's bread and butter you kind of have to circumvent some of the boring did <laughs> like, you see napoleon no, no, no. That's with the new one, Walking Phoenix. No, that movie. It it was Wasn't it like three plus hours. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think it's a three hour one. I think it's oh. longer, but I don't think it's three hours. Maybe yeah. two thirty, two forty, or something like that. Um, it was good, but I remember going in and like, oh, this movie did not give me what I wanted it to be. It was like slightly a comedy. It was. It was weird. Oh. Um, but I thought it was going to be a ton of. I thought it was going to be more action heavy and not as biopicky. Yeah. Uh, because the trailers show mostly battles and fights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's you how you go get into them. it. And that's what I think I'm going to get. And you don't really. It's more like him fucking Vanessa Kirby a lot. Yes. Very weirdly. He walks in and he just kind of. Hell goes, yeah. He walks into rooms when Vanessa Kirby's there and he just goes, huh. And the, and the maids leave and then he just, <laughs> ra- and then he just rabbit fucks her. I'm like, this is, <laughs> this, is this is wild. <laughs> What's going on here? I love but, a good power uh, play. But it's supposed to be, but it's supposed to be played off as kind of a comedic thing and a, a weird comedic thing, like not full blown comedy, but slightly funny. And it's just, it was weird. So they had a couple of uh, fights, and I think they only had like two, maybe three, like real big fight things, and they were fairly quick. There's one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one towards the end. There's one in the middle though, which is so fucking cool because I don't remember who he's fighting. I don't remember any of the battles. I don't remember. I don't. Or I don't remember. Any of the significance. I know of it. fake history a lot better yeah. than real history. Yeah. I can tell you that much. <laughs> so he 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 basically lures these people to this like he makes them come to him and he's like up on a tree hill and stuff and it's in a really snowy Arctic kind of environment um, and the the army's coming after him and he ends up uh, luring them in and sacrificing a few of his troops and they get them all really close to him basically at the bottom of the hill and they're up up on up in the trees still shooting firing and fighting all this stuff. And so once they start charging up there, they end up shooting the cannons at them. Nice. Turns out they're on a frozen lake. Ooh, they don't know. Yikes. So they're, they're, cause there's a bunch of snow on there, and they shoot they shoot the cannons in like a circle around the army. And while they're retreating, they just shoot the cannons out further and just drown everybody in the in the fight. And that's it was sick, sick to that's see sick. in the movie. And I think that's like a real historical battle. I would hope if, if you go through that much effort to put it in the yeah. movie, I better be looking that up on Wikipedia Dude, and seeing it. It was cool. You should look up the fight scene just to watch that because it's fun. I don't know if I really recommend recommend the movie. It wasn't a bad movie. It just it was one of those things where I had higher expect not higher, but different expectations and then when it, it was a different kind of movie than what I thought it was going to be and I I it was it was fine. I need to watch more like, well, one, I need to be better at history in general because it is interesting. It is. <laughs> like, it really is. That's where we get all of our movie ideas from because the truth is stranger than, like, 
everything stranger than fiction kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. There's so much out there that you hear a story and you're like, there's just no fucking way. And then it gets made in a movie and people are still like, there's no fucking way. Right, like, bro. What? Like, <laughs> but especially historical war and battles, like to see wartime, how it developed into like two dudes standing, like two groups just standing in a line going like taking so turns and firing. Dumb. Like how, and then you move into where we are now with like drone warfare and stuff and like how far we've come. But military strategies how some battles were won how certain wars were won different pushes or pulls in in the forces of wherever whoever whatever country is making a play it's like it's fascinating it is so so interesting to watch like i don't know it's it's only interesting i think it's crazy to know that there's actual human lives that we're playing chess with kind of thing i know and it's and that's it's, that's wild and the more <laughs> fucked up thing is like it's it's happening right now yeah and everywhere and i am so interested in it because i love seeing foreign policy and geopolitics and how things work and where countries are and why they're beefing because of this and that and learning the history and what what the shit is going on with israel and me trying to go back to the history and figure out what the fuck's going on it, i couldn't it's so goddamn complicated <laughs> but i, and I i've tried either. several times but it's <laughs> yeah. but it's but it's cool to see how that stuff works and i know it's fucked up to say it's cool because there's people that are literally getting bombed i get that but it is cool to see the politics and watch history play out. And it's just insane yeah, to watch because you're like, this has always been happening. And you get to see the context behind why they happen and how the different battles break out. And you get to just learn all these things and you go really in depth. And you're like, oh my God, this is endless. I could learn about this stuff yeah. forever. One thing <laughs> I remember from like taking AP European history, sophomore year of high school, uh, it's the only AP test I passed somehow. So I kind of retained something. The only things were stuff like this. I remember there's something that happened in <laughs> history preface. somewhere, and it's called the defenestration of Prague. I remember hearing that. And I was the like, hell does defenestration mean? Exactly. Guess what? It's a word made up specifically. I'm pretty sure. I'll have to fact check myself, but I'm pretty sure it's literally for throwing someone out of a window. That is the definition of it. Because in this moment, there was some like overthrowing of a government type of scenario, and they threw some dude out of a fucking window into like a pile of shit on the ground. And it, it like more Napoleon stuff, by the way. And it like <laughs> it definitely started off some some movement. And yeah, when you look it up, defenestration of Prague, all this stuff. It just says three incidents in history of Bohemia <laughs> in which people were defenestrated. You're like, okay, what the hell does that mean? Defenestration. The action of throwing someone out of a window. That's sick. There's a I'm literal gonna say, I'm gonna word. I'm going to tell people I'm going to defenestrate. There's a now. literal word created just for throwing someone out of it a sounds, window. It's, it sounds like rapey. I'm uh, going to defenestrate you. Yeah. <laughs> it oh, yeah. So it rapey. sparked. Uh, see, this is anyone who has taken AP will be like, you are such a dummy for not knowing why. It's a. It started the 30 years war. And if I was smarter and knew more, I could tell you more about that. I couldn't remember or tell you anything about that. But it started a war. Throwing some dude out of a window. That's all it takes. Literally started a war and they made a word for it. That shit is fascinating to me. Is like I go into high school and I'm like, there's a word for throwing someone out of a window because some dude in Bohemia in the 1600s just was a dumbass and probably had some bad takes and someone's like, fuck this guy. Dude, even, <laughs> even just diving into the origination of sayings, yeah, like, I can't think of yeah. one off the top of my head, but learning about those stories and how they originate, like that's that's where the saying comes from. That is a wild, random. I know, st- and it's usually so stupid. I too. know what you're saying too, and I'm going to try and think of one. And I can't think of any, but no. totally no. get what you're saying. On yeah, like sayings that have been around for like hundreds of years, but come from old English style of speaking that we've just yeah. carried over because it just is what it is. Yeah, we just still use chip it the same chip way. on your sh- shoulder. That's one oh. where. I think, um, uh, don't quote me on this because I'm not going to get it exactly, but it literally has to do with going into bars back in the days and pubs and uh, brothels and all these different places, places where you nice. can drink and go go fuck and all that good stuff. Nice. Where somebody, if somebody was beefing with you and wanted to fight you, they would put a chip on your shoulder. And so you'd be seen as like kind of the angry guy that wants to fight and that's where a chip on your shoulder comes from. I was like, what the Why fuck? the fuck would you put a chip on my shoulder? What does that have to do with me being mad? I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know, but it is like, literally about a chip being on your shoulder. I, I think. I hope. I chip hope I remember in, that right. I'm, and I'm probably thinking of like a chip, like a Lay's Doritos chip. I don't think that's what it is. No, it's wood it's, chips. It's got okay, wood chips. This mic is freaking out, isn't it? Can you hear that? No. Maybe it's just my headphones. I don't know. Are you like are you cutting out? Yeah, something, but it's like in and out, and that's I'm worried about the tape. Oh, when you touch that. See that? Yeah. 
<laughs> try it. Try it. <laughs> don't fucking hyperventilate. What fucking with it? Hold on. Don't touch it and just talk there. Just talk now. Say hello. Hello. It's still kind of. You could try fucking with it a little bit if it makes it worse. Hello. See? That sounded a little better. Yeah. Now it's good. Okay. I, I guess just can't just move it. Yeah. I guess just don't That's touch why it's it. Duct tape. It, it, is, is, does it look a little loose? Does the plug? I don't know, this? but all I can say is since we've been here, I've been messing with it. And there's clearly a reason. It's like it's kind of like doesn't like to stay up sometimes. You might have to swap blue for purple or something next time. Yeah, it's it's doing okay for now. As long as I don't touch it, I think I'll yeah, be that's, okay. Yeah, that sounds better. Just fucking handcuff me. Let's talk about the penguin, dude. Nice. So the penguin getting better at doing, yeah, which getting, is like, awesome, sick. So episode three of the penguin came out uh, last Sunday. Here, I don't, I didn't watch it till last night, uh, but I was already really enjoying the show. And I was texting Matt a little bit about it last night. I was going to wait to talk to you about it until today, even though I texted you. Because that's what I was, when I was watching, I was like, dude, make sure you yeah, watch yeah, this. Because yeah. I didn't uh, know if you'd watched it or I'm not. Because I want to talk about it. When I got my Sunday show, that's my Sunday show now. So, Dude, and, and now it's going to be mine. Yeah. Because this episode, I make, it's obviously too early to tell. But from what I've seen in these three episodes, that episode made the show like great to me. It's like, right, yeah. It, is, it went from a pretty damn good show to great with this episode. Because the intro got me, man. It fucked me up. So, again, spoilers. I'm still going to say these things, even though it's always spoiler-filled. I just want to give people a heads up in case they just, like, click into the video and, yeah. like, we're talking about this. Uh, Penguin but, spoilers starting now. Yeah, Penguin spoilers. But the intro of episode three, I thought was just picking up with Vic just kind of walking around and doing stuff. I didn't pick it up. Uh -oh. I don't know. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention hard enough. Because there were cues. I watched a breakdown of it showing that we already knew that it was... Uh, during the Batman when the things are getting exploded. Like there's newspapers or something in the background that showed I when it was taking place. I, I When we were watching him and it showed his family, I was like, oh, this has to be a flashback, right? I would think because I thought he said at some point like his family got decimated by Well, that, the that thing event. is, at least how I remember, the Penguin said that. Vic never like confirmed it or said, he, said anything. True. He just kind of looked down. So I was like, oh, his family he, is alive and he's just fucking around. He, That's what I at thought. At least the Penguin knew like, oh, I heard about that area of the city. Like it got wiped out. Yeah, like, and then yikes. I mean, I think Vic just kind of like looked down or something. He didn't yeah. say anything. So that I think was the only thing I was referencing to be like, mm, I feel like his family's probably dead. And it also makes sense as to why he's just some bum kid who's hanging around Oz. Like he's got nowhere else to go. It's but I thought he had just been fucking around for the last couple yeah. of days and like just, just came back to his family or something that this he had been kind of, like kind of going back and forth. I don't know. I was, I was making stuff in my head going along because I was like, from what I'm picking up, I feel like his family's alive. Like they're, they're, they're just picking up with him. He's walking home. They're yeah. like... Yeah, we haven't heard from you in a little while, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, he goes up there. His family's super wholesome, awesome, good, hardworking people. And the he's only all, good yeah. moment we'll ever have where yeah, he doesn't have a chaotic life. Yeah, I know. It's it's sad. And like, <laughs> and he goes up on the roof and he shows Min that, Minutes like, before actual devastation. Yeah, and he, he goes up on the roof and... You know, the, the dude's drug drug dealer cousin or whatever comes up on there and they walk away and, you know, because he doesn't want to be yeah. a part of that. So it's showing, obviously, how his family getting smoked yeah. changed him. And the scene of them blowing up the seawalls from this perspective, especially, I don't want to bring up war, current war stuff again, but watching these videos on the internet of bombs falling on cities, I was like, this is making me fucking anxious. Because you see hurricanes in Florida right now, too. Yeah, right? yeah, everything. And yeah, the flooding. Yeah. So yeah, seeing the it's flood, insane. the seawalls come down. So watching this, like it actually made me, and obviously since it's HBO, they do such a good job of creating spectacle and the sound effects. And I had my surround sound and my mm -hmm. big TV in my living room all blaring. And I was like, this is fucking scary. Because at first they, get, they go up there to watch fireworks. And so you hear the first explosion. And they're like, whoa, because it was like a, <laughs> like a giant fireball. Yeah. And they're like, and then they start seeing bombs in the distance across the way in the rich neighborhoods. And you're like, that is so fucking scary. And then it, obviously they get closer and closer. And then it zooms in on the seawall getting breached and it flooding through and taking down the road and just it shows how fucking high the sea is too like how below sea level gotham is because it goes up and splashes in and kills them on the sixth floor of their building yeah so it's just, like a, a real storm or a real hurricane surge at times where they yeah. show some of the walls of water coming in it's like oh, fuck i didn't even touch it it's going crazy yeah it's okay It'll but right. it's it's wild like how fast things can change that is what i got from it was you're looking and you're like, oh shit, is that water? <laughs> We're dead. Yeah, like, I know. Just like that. Yeah, and it's... it's. I mean, not it's, even dead. You still have to drown, I think. That's the worst part, too. You yeah. actually wouldn't immediately die unless well, you got... Well, hopefully it would smack you. Into yeah, like unless you got tossed into something, but you have to think there's probably a moment of at least a minute or so where someone's like trying to look for light, trying to find... It. It's, that would be, I mean, hell on earth, literally. Yeah, it's... it's 
I'm going to move this because I'm the one who's touching it because I'm realizing that it's on my table. And so when I touch the table, it fucks up. Oh. So I'm going to move this here and move away from the table. <laughs> just always <laughs> Technical some, difficulties. Always something. <clears throat> but so then it just flashes them to modern times. And I was like, damn, it got me. I love that I was kind of stupid for that. Because even at the beginning of the explosions, yeah. I didn't know what was happening. I was like, oh, Holy wow. Fuck. This is, this is a, the first two explosions. I was like, wait, what was going on? I was like, oh, my God. We're at the beginning of the Batman. I just so I love that I didn't pick that up because it made me like kind of be like, holy shit more when it yeah. did happen. And when they end up jumping to the club scene and showing him having his panic attack, like, I don't know if that was from a contact high from the drug or something, because it seemed very dramatic it and would, hallucinogenic. I'll be honest, as like, I've never felt something like that. No. But... I've had the panic attacks, yeah. I've, I've had moments where it's just sensory overload. It was yeah. like, it was the sounds mixed in with the lights mixed in with a, a scenario where you're not, like, fully comfortable, and something happens that's a little erratic he drops the like everything's just kind of like it yeah. hits in all everything in that one moment kind of just vacuums into your brain to be like oh fuck this sucks doesn't yeah. it and you just kind of collapse you go into that i i really like the way it was done because it, it was awesome it more hits, hbo sick I, shit a club scene you, someone totally could have a fucking crazy breakdown with just the strobing lights and the sound and how loud the it bass is hits showing and explosions that, that feeling of like if you can't get out and you're like, all you're doing is looking for an exit, and you're just like, Fuck, like, I just want to not be here. It's very overwhelming. While you're around a bunch of prostitutes and just, carrying a bag full of drugs that a, you're selling yeah, for the first time, and very <laughs> high stress scenario. Yeah. So I really like that. Yeah, he goes in and he just gets freaking. I mean, he was hey, he was the bag man though. He still did it. He, he accomplished it. the job. And yeah. only had the one fuck up, but he was the bag man. He got it done. You got it fucking like, done, Vic. Good job, Vic. Leading into. My favorite parts of the episode was just how introspective it actually got, where we get to see the kid tell him, like, he sees him texting someone on his phone, and he's like, show me it. Give me the phone. And he's like, oh, oh, you think I'm holding you hostage here? You think I'm, like, some big, bad... It definitely like, came off that way. It was just... It's like, it was... I liked that he was like, oh, you think I'm fucking... I'm, like this ultimate, ultimate villain. He's like, I'm not a good guy. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not sitting here with a gun to your head like I actually am right now. Like he's done, like, he's held a gun to his head like, like he's three done or four yeah. times now. But it shows the so penguin's stressful. fucking crazy. The Dude. penguin is manipulative. He is a bad guy, but he's very good at playing his, how he plays the game. And that is out of his fucking mouth. He's a snake. Dude. And he puts it all on Vic to be like, no, you know what, you pussy? That's on you. You don't want to do it. You're the pussy who can't come up to the plate, step up and get the job done. Fine, go for it. Go ahead and leave. But then the penguin doesn't even realize, holy shit, I kind of like that kid. He, he's he been helping out. Holy shit, I have nobody in my corner. He's had that breakdown like, several nobody. times. Yeah, yeah. I've, if I get rid of anyone who's on my side, I'm fucking alone with zero recourse of a plan B. Yeah. So you need someone on your side. And... It's always awesome when the main character, because usually a lot of times in shows, like it's the whole dynamic of everything that's that's happening, uh, that all kind of culminates. It's, it's sometimes the main character isn't always like the best character. Like Luke Skywalker to me isn't like the best character in Star Wars. You know, like yeah, it, he's he's awesome. He's but, like he is the character. Yeah, I don't think he's not the best character. I don't think Aragorn's the best character or Frodo necessarily. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's probably more like Gandalf or something. But. The penguin in the show is by far the best character, and it is by a mile. Colin Farrell is is insane. Uh, He's so good at it. Yeah, watching him, because you can tell he does feel these emotions. He does feel these these types of ways when he's like explaining stuff to Vic or even to Sophia when he apologizes. That's to a her. Good, great scene too. But yeah, and it's all awesome, and you can tell like he's serious. But he's he's a more extreme version, I would say, of Walter White, where you're like he's going to say these things and he does mean it sometimes but you know he's going to turn around and do whatever's best for him no matter what the cause yeah. is and it is so immediate and drastic like at the end when he gets in the car the ditch her, and dude. it says after having that whole apologetic moment and like opening up to her fucker fucker <laughs> fucker go fucking go it's like she's on her own fuck it i leave saw her. her i saw her run we're out of here and yeah. also it's been a while since in like a tv show i was so so pumped for the vic moment where he pulls up to the bus and he gets his one chance with the girl it's like it was his do you want the life you had prior, which you could leave all Fork of this? The road. You can go away and completely ditch everything, and you could live a life with this girl and be normal. But 
there is something he likes about he does, this life. It's brought him back, and he comes back. Uh, he obviously perfect story setup, but like. I was jacked when he came back. Like he decides, yeah. like he starts the car back up and he pulls away from the bus. I was like, hell yeah! And you remember, I'm like, oh shit, where's he going? Well, he's going back to the spot where Penguin and Sophia are yeah. literally and about to get up. domed right now. Yeah, and he fucking rolls in and saves the day. And I was like, he's in now. He is that. If you're not in, then I don't know. So he's committed to the penguin he's committed to the cause yeah and it's a perfect arc in the in the episode because you see him like realizing that he gets his first yeah. m- amount of money he gets a thousand dollars he week, likes which is it. game changer for him he gets to invite his girl over to the fancy apartment and mm-hmm. that he loves that he plays off plays the cop perfectly and he, he loves that and you can tell yeah, him, which was a six scene just too. paid off bribe the cop to yeah. be like Ooh. smooth almost instantly and he's using I, I i mean i they said this in the breakdown a little bit but like that he was kind of using his stutter in his speech to buy himself time you know, to like think okay. a little bit. More, I, I feel right? like I've seen that where his stutter is not always there. No. And I now I'm or at least st- not nearly as bad. I'm starting like when he's with his family, it's clearly it is a stress thing. Like it's a nerves. It it acts up when he's in a really high stress scenario sometimes, but there's also he's aware of it and he can use it to his advantage. Yeah. Like if someone with a stutter, you're never if you know they have one, you're not gonna f- stop them. Like there's a moment like that with they're yeah. eating and the waiter tries to finish his sentence and uh, the penguin's like let him fucking finish his yeah. own sentence he's Shut a man up. he can he's do it to save his tip yeah like he'll get it and <laughs> it's like stuff like that the little instances of the penguin and uh, and he is and trying Vic. to help the kid yeah he cares but like it's weird he's it's, it's so a manipulative up. it's just a very like as long as you're within my hold and i'm the one helping that's perfect yeah because it's all me baby I'm fueling your fire. I'm the reason you're going further, and I'm the reason we're going to keep going further. So he just, it's a power play. He just loves being in control because clearly he's not getting that in his real life. He and it, does not have a single ounce of control anywhere around him. It's literally <laughs> he's tried so flying hard. by the seat of his pants 24 7, hoping to God he doesn't die in the next hour. Yeah, and like, he loves it though. When he's in the, when yeah, Vic yeah. picks him up in the car and they're running away from Zoe, he's like, uh, Sophia, he's like, oh, you feel that, Vic? You like that? I was like, oh, I love this. This he's character's fucking adrenaline. Awesome. Like they're both adrenaline junkies. And yeah, they love the the chase. They Feel love, alive, Vic. They love the chase, <laughs> and it's just kind of figuring out how to keep going while maybe making a buck at the same time. But in this instance, it's just like, dude, how are they going to survive? Which is kind of fun. I like the like Oz is cliffhangers. Oz is not necessarily the smartest person ever. He has his flaws, and he has things that he isn't look. He could have gotten killed, but Vic saved him. So yeah. like, that was a Dude's part. Just getting lucky, living. He's getting lucky day to day because of every day. choice he's and the people he keeps around him. But that can only go so far. I'm just. It's so entertaining. It's like I love watching a guy who. It's less Walt. Like the Walter White thing that gets weird is when you're watching Breaking Bad and you're actually rooting for this guy to like kill people. Yeah, this. Piece I of don't. Shit. I don't really <laughs> root for the Penguin to kill people. Like he is still a very bad person in my head. That's what I meant. It's yeah. like he's a more extreme version. Yeah, of Walter he White. he still gets across the like. <clears throat> I mean, he lays it down in the in the conversation with Vic. That moment is it's it's fifty fifty. Like whether he wants to kill him or kiss him. You can't tell. It's so like emotions are going all around. The conversation flow is like yeah, it's, and it you, starts hot with gun on his head to ending with him being like, "Well, if you want to go, then fucking go." And Vic kind of looking at him being like, "Like, are you going to cry about it?" Like <laughs> and he almost like he is. He pretty much is. He goes out to Sophia and kind of unloads on her all of his emotions of being like, "And you know what? You're right. A little more backstory. We know that he has a hand in getting her to Arkham. It was something he said and something he did that ratted her out. Just sprinkling. Yeah, ratted her out and got her sent there. And she's very aware. And she's clearly trying to let him know, I know that. I'm going. That doesn't mean nothing. And I want an apology of some sort. And he actually gives a pretty damn good apology of some sort from someone who's the penguin. Yeah. Like, he cries. Because he's so good at it. He cries. Like, and now I love the penguin more. Is he crying? Is he actually emotional? I think Yes. But it can be debated. I think that's the beauty of it almost is like, I don't know. I really don't. I think he's being pretty truthful and honest with her. He's crying. He's showing. He's like, I fucked up. I put you in a spot. But you know what? Here's the reason. I did it for myself. I did it so I could have a good name with Carmine and it would push me up. Is that what you mean? Yeah. You want to hear it? That's it. So he always gives you the actual, like, he'll give you the hard facts because he also just, 
doesn't care if people know. Like everyone knows he's who he is. Yeah, in that moment, he's being <laughs> he's vulnerable and opening up, and he's like, "Yeah, a guy like me, you see a guy like me, you think I could ever have all this?" And yeah, blah blah blah, that stuff. Um, and he's like, "Do I regret it? No, I, yeah. don't, I don't regret it." So you know, in that moment, he's having this moment opening up to her and apologizing to her. But then five seconds later, he's jumping in the car with Vic and leaving her. Same ditch her ass. Ditcher. And it's just, it's just <laughs> that one was so crazy because it was so immediate it's not like oh in the beginning of the next episode he's gonna do some shit to betray sophie or something they, it's like right away they do good endings of these episodes so far they do also kind of dumb how the moroni moronis just pull up out in front of them in front of the triad club and like they don't have any guard that, people around with the triad when they have the big head honcho the yeah Dai Lao there Dai Li, I forget well and the, so Dai a lot of the Avatar. plot the plot was <laughs> centering around trying to get the deal done but the guy who was in that other like who they're selling to or trying to get to be their distributor? He's like, that I so dope, I way. need the okay from the upper because clearly I don't like how this feels and you guys are just talking out your asses. And so the whole thing was like they want Johnny VD, I think is the guy's name, yep. the head of uh, whatever their names are, the Falcons. Falcons. Mm-hmm. Um, he if he says yes on this, we can go ahead and we'll and we'll get this done. Did we ever get closure on that, or that just kind of ended as? I think that ended with him shoving the phone in his mouth and then telling him to make the fucking call. Oh, that's which was right. Also like, that's right. He gets it. He's so on him. sensitive. You yeah. all you have to do is Johnny obviously knows too, and he just he says a couple of things that pisses him off, and he shoves the phone yeah. in his mouth. And I thought he was like ripping out his tooth or like cutting him or something. They always do wild noises and they sounds. Do. They do, and it was Teeth just it was cracking. If you notice, it was just the phone cracking because he was shoving oh, the phone in his mouth. Still wouldn't feel good. No. No, no, yeah. hell no. And but it's more of it. Like, it was just to like, it was, he looked around. He's like, what? I, I got my phone in my hand. Fucking <laughs> like, yeah, it was he, just so quick. He was, he got clicked into, he got triggered basically by this dude. And Sophia's just, yeah. Well, like, and, she doesn't say anything. And wasn't she, time. she was kind of mad about him stepping in too and being like, oh, of course. Yeah. Anytime. You can't just step in and be the big dog when I thought this was my thing that you're helping with, right? It also made it seem like he was this. I also saw learned this in the breakdown, which I, I kind of got, but didn't think about until I watched the breakdown was uh, it, it was kind of insinuated that he came up with the name of the drug without telling her because like, he yeah, says they call it bliss. And then she gives him a look like you yeah. did. You did. You were taking charge and doing things without my permission. And stuff. I, I got and I, I love it. I kind love of the felt dynamic. that he definitely the way they show it. It sounds like he even is like, yeah, it's called bliss like in that moment he's like fuck i gotta think of something <laughs> like, yeah and i like it it's I a like good name. dynamic yeah it's a good name for it too it's 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 fun her her and him are awesome yeah they're so good together the kids and fine. vic vic he's as good. a third like the three of them being kind of the main characters yeah is awesome you get obviously the main penguin the name of the show who's centered around all the good like you get good from him and bad from him you get I think I like all three characters have good and bad. They're all gray. No one's black and white, really. Except the girl is probably more bad, but she's trying to like create a name for herself, so we have to care about her. He's pretty bad. He's pretty bad. (laughs) He He, is. He does bad things for some good stuff, but mostly just bad stuff. And I think Vic is mostly good for now, but you can see that he's getting that itch. They give me enough sympathy, enough to be like, I think I do care. Like just a little, not yeah. like, not like I need to see this dude save his city. Cause that ain't going to be what it is. That's yeah. like the talk he gives to Vic being like the honest man doesn't get a fair life here. Like the honest man gets shafted 24 seven. And most people would be like, so then we need to make the he- Like we have to help make the world a place so that the honest man does succeed. Yeah. The, so and the, he's like, now fuck the world. Yeah. The bathroom fuck the scene. World. Yeah. He's, he says, fuck you. And he's like, fuck me. Fuck the world. Yeah. The world doesn't make it for guys like us. We don't get what we want. The true. world isn't fair. Very guys, true. Mechanics aren't going to get what they want. Like all, like your dad, and he's talking about his dad, and like yeah. I think that's like what makes him say "fuck you" or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, this dude's got he's got a chip on his shoulder. And and I like the dialogue <laughs> too, though, because the stuff he says is stuff that you have to kind of be like, he's not wrong. I get what he's saying. He's coming at it from a very bad point of view, You're but he's not wrong. They have to be sympathetic. Yeah, they. Oz clearly is a guy who we've seen his mom and the mom dynamics weird. That was the last episode, right? That wasn't this episode. I think so, yeah. Okay. But it's a weird dynamic that like got some mommy issues type of thing. He is doing what he does. I thought they were going to kiss. Yeah, it's it's weird. It was weird. She's clearly got a hold on him to make sure that he, whatever he's doing, I think in his head, he can rationalize, I do it for my mom. Yeah, even, I think that's his cop even out in with his the head. Dementia and stuff. It's like, but it was cool. Yeah, in the cool end, it's, it's a very weird. You get a little glimpse into like, this guy might seem cold-blooded at all times, but look at him with his mom. 
he like dances with her and he holds her like they're very intimate and they're very it, it's just weird it's weird it's but weird. that's that's like classic italian mob yeah. movie type of stuff where like oh they're bad guys that are ripping people's heads off yeah. and burying them in a ditch but they're all about family and they'll do anything yeah. for their family and they'll love on their mom say thank you you're a good person i mean tony soprano to is his mom the dynamic between tony soprano and his mom is like a huge part of the show she it makes, is wild to him it makes me want to go see it makes me want to watch mob type movies so bad now. Like I want to see The Sopranos. I it, want to watch Mad Men. I want to watch Peaky Fucking Blind. I th- well, I do think it is another like this is kind of a historical thing, but the fascination behind mobs and mafias who exist in our world and yeah. like these underground groups of criminals who are affluent enough and have enough pull within a local city to basically do whatever they want. Yeah, and they're untouchable. Yeah, and yeah, they do it for family. Like they're loyal. They're loyal to their people to a T it's very interesting to watch people be that loyal. Like to some of us who are very obviously not connected into a lifestyle of like, if you say anything about my family or you wrong me or you do something like I'm going to make sure you pay. It's something, it's one of those aspects where like, you're not going to know that connection. Like you might be close with your family and stuff, but it's not going to be the same kind of closeness if you're not involved, it's a, it's a similar thing with guys in military squads, but if you're not involved in murdering people and doing these high stake things where you think you could die at any moment. So you have to, you build this trust and bond with like family so much more. And it's a lot like what military people tell me is like, it doesn't matter anybody who's in your squad, your differences or anything. They're a brother and they're the closest person you, have you could to, possibly ever have. Cause they've been through shit. And you have to not only rely on yourself being on guard at 24 seven, but you better hope the guys around you are just as on guard as you are. And guess who doesn't have that? Oz. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his That's dementia exactly. mom and Vic and Vic's doing his best trying getting better. But yeah. yeah, it's, it's crazy to see that hierarchy of like, the head of the mob who just is like, what I say goes, fuck you otherwise. Go to Italy. Like, <laughs> yeah, go to Italy. Just like take a trip. And they're like, fuck. Like, and what's his name? The one guy gives it to her straight where he's like, go Maybe. to go to Italy. And he's like, and if you don't, I'm going to tell them you went there anyway. Also, <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that's so just freaking. go there. I'm going to tell them that's what happened. Yeah. Is that you went to Yeah, Italy, that's a that's unquote. a good line. Why? Who the fuck is Johnny Vitti? If we go by family I think things, it's her uncle. No, the uncle's the head guy, the main guy. Aren't they like all her uncles? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm, th- there's a cousin, there's the uncle, and then I thought that Johnny Vitti was some random guy because he doesn't have the Falcone name, See, that's, and he's a man, so he should have the Falcone I, name, right? I, I just say like, they're all like family in quotes, you know? It's because uh, They do say the family. They the, don't say the Falcone. It's more if you get buddy-buddy enough with these people and they trust you, you're incorporated, yeah. and you get to be in. So I think there might be some weird... They could just be friends, or it could be cousin of a cousin of an uncle of a who knows what. But if they're there, I would say it's like they're just their family. And I'm I think we'll learn more about that as we go. Yeah, I mean they're clearly using the what's his, the VD's guy. He's like fucking the one chick's wife or the one dude's wife in the background. Yeah, is that is is he fucking the uncle's wife who initially told her to go to Italy? He so that guy's fucking the head. I think he's fucking the head's wife fucking the head's wife i don't yeah. like that i don't like I know. that but the main <laughs> like the main guy the main head of the mob i yeah. think he, he's fucking her his wife which yeah. is like obviously massive fucking no-no <laughs> also when they're in the restaurant and oz goes over to her at the table what the what does he do he says i need you to do something and it's gonna be bad or something how the fuck does he convince her to go just fuck johnny vd like right now uh like what happened there i don't i didn't oh pick because it's her isn't it what do you mean I think it's her. It's it is the wife. She's there. Yeah, and but, so I, he has those pictures. So he, it's blackmail. He's able to be so like he showed the pictures of them fucking to tell her to go fuck him to or not. See, that's where maybe I they didn't wrong. show us how he convinced yeah. her to go do it. I guess in the end, it must be like a play where it's like I'll kill you. I'll I'll show these I'll show these pictures and you're dead one way, or you do this and you can be on our side and I'll cover for you if you do this for me. I could see that being a play. Yeah. You have was, to use her. So in order to do that, just guarantee her, if you do this, I'll make sure that when this does come out, you're clear. Whether that's real or not, or true, who knows. But I think it's just Oz has blackmail on everyone. Like, that's he's got those pictures. He's been waiting to use those pictures. You can't build any real relationships. Just got to blackmail no. people and yeah. fuck with people. Well, that's why nobody wants to be in a real relationship with this guy. He's going to cut you down every time he gets the first chance he gets to take a one-up on you, and it means you aren't a problem. He's doing it. I love it. 
<laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's fun to watch. Yeah, dude, it's it, awesome. it is fun, and thank God it's HBO. And like I said, it's still early. St- I don't remember where I said this. I don't remember if I said this on the pod or not. But it's 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 clearly in the Batman world, obviously. Yeah, but it's not shoved in your face too much. It's no. like they do little snippets here and there. There's no mention of Batman. I and think stuff my, like that. One of my favorite aspects is how I don't feel like it's the Batman. Yeah. Like it's, I don't need the reliance on the Batman to make this a good show. A lot of shows would be like, we're doing it in the Batman universe. Well, of course, Batman has to show up. This goes to show you can do a very entertaining and interesting show on a character within there that does not include the Batman. Yeah. It's already happening. You've got cool characters that I'm super into within the lore. Sophia Falcone as the daughter of Carmine. When I know this many names, three episodes into a show, it's, it's, and yeah, like that's actually, you're so right. It, proves i'm paying attention it proves i'm into it and i'm yeah. trying to keep up because there's a lot kind of going on at once you need to he's playing both sides at once so it's kind of hard to keep up every now and then where i'm like yeah whose side are we on in this moment okay that's right but in the end it's just a fun show i just like a good like you're saying high quality everything feels like they're not trying to skimp out on any aspect yeah and now we get to talk about it weekly for like the next yeah. month probably i don't know how many episodes there are i don't know what the plan is with the show it's probably gonna yeah. do like a com- confirmation for season two thing because it's obviously doing well everybody's talking about it and they like yeah. it um i'd so, be curious so we'll to see. know if it was like do they have an idea for yeah how many seasons worth of story or were they like we do one season and we just if it does good it does good i don't know but it would make sense i think it'd be cool as if the show ends up leading into finishing or maybe not finishing but one of the seasons if it can lead into the next movie where we get to see that could be cool like the lead in i like i like the idea of hey you like the batman it's out there you can go watch it the next batman's going to come out and obviously maybe time passed in between the movies so like the new batman starts up it's like oh well oz hey maybe he's the head of the family we don't know how he got there yeah. but it would make sense within context to be like oh well he got to the head then okay that's how they lead into and, fighting and it's like well if you want to watch how he got to that spot here's a show for you yeah. it actually shows the entirety but i don't think it's actually necessary to show for the movie's sake you can just skip ahead and be like if it's a cool like in between show <laughs> that can lead from end of batman show all this backstory of what happened leads straight into the sequel to the batman that would be sick i think that'd yeah. be really cool yeah, and luckily it's HBO and it's Matt Reeves that directed it and all this stuff. But I don't know; it just makes me so worried when you do that because I thought that the Batman was supposed to be a one-off thing that Matt Reeves did, and obviously it did really well. So now I, don't I think know. he's yeah. making a sequel, and I think that's how the Penguin happened to. I don't know for sure; I'll have to look all that up. But what I'm getting at is, I just don't want them to do a, a Joker thing. The Joker, I don't think it would be like that as much. I hope not. But the thing is with Joker and the whole folly a day thing. Is that is that it? That was supposed to be. I know who who directed Joker again. Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips. That's right. It was supposed to be a one off movie, a one off project. The the cliche thing that happens. What happened with Star Wars? Things that we talk about is like there was no vision for a future after this movie. There was nothing that was supposed to be happening. This is supposed to be a one off story. That was supposed to be yeah. one and done and end. Becomes the first mo- rated R movie to m- gross a billion dollars ever in history. Oh, studio says you got to make another one. It's like full. Now we got, <laughs> yeah. now we got full. Man, I'm not one of these. So I'm just gonna he, get conked out my yeah fucking full. So butt. he so he gets sucked into it. You get Lady Gaga and you have Walking Phoenix back, which is awesome in the beginning. And then it gets announced that it's a musical. I'm like, okay, it, that's weird. Um, but you know, Marvel's done some weird shit before too. Um, you know, you can always pull stuff off. And then it comes out and people just fucking hate it. And apparently, it's just trash. And so like, I just. I get so anxious with these things now. Yeah. Like when something like if there was not a plan, like there was a plan with the, well, I guess Lord George Lucas does say that he technically did just want to make the first movie, but I think that he did have writings of other stuff. He just didn't think it was going to be successful enough to actually make another one. Uh, Some people are better at coming up with it on the fly than others. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the, the new star Wars trilogy, the newest one, that one, that one would, the, the reason that it's bad is because it was not coherent. And there wasn't somebody overlooking yeah. everything. They made the first movie before they knew what the second two movies were going to be and they just made <laughs> clearly yeah and they just released them and they had different directors for them so there's no vision yeah. for them so the dif- there's not the an overarching story different directors was always going to be a bad yeah choice. that makes it even worse Which luckily it's hard lux- luckily it would be the same director i think matt reeves has already said he's going to come out and do a batman 2 or whatever i think so as far as i know they yeah. they should be good to but, go but todd phillips came back for folly a and it was 
I just, ass, but he was forced uh, into it. It's not yeah. something he wanted to do. Like he had a vision and he finished it, and then you made him make more, and that's not a that's a hard thing to do. I'm just curious to know, like, did they just cast Lady Gaga and then they were like, well, we have to sing, or was it they Stars put born. songs in and it had musical elements, and then they're like, oh, so we need to get someone who can sing then. Like, I I'm just kind of confused on have, the music stuff is very interesting. I I could see music sequence. Like I I also don't know fully. Is it a musical musical? It's a musical from what I'm hearing. Really? Yeah. Like, how often are they going to be doing music? Frequently. Or is it like musical sequences that happen in the midst of the movie? From what I, the reviews I've listened to, it is a musical. A uh, legit musical. The definition of a musical, I feel like, is almost subjective even. Where I'm like, I can't picture what it would look like, I guess. And that's probably why I'm curious. And ha- maybe why they kind of did this is like, oh, that sounds crazy. You want to see it, right? You kind of do. But if it doesn't work, I I heard it was super incoherent towards the end of the movie, where it's just like so much happening. It's nonsensical because there's yeah. not like like there's just uh, no like story. Said, there's no story. It's somebody being forced to make something off of something that was supposed to be singular. I a one off. So it's yeah. I just feel like there wasn't even myself included. Like I wasn't clamoring for a sequel to the Joker. No. And I, yeah, again, it just doesn't feel like it needs one. I also wasn't as high on the Joker as most people were. I liked I it. Thought I still it was thought it was good. really good. But yeah. a lot of people think that movie is like I, a I thought it. Really I good. thought it was good. I think it's overrated compared yeah, to what I most people say. I, I, I don't think it's like the next best. I mean, if you want to get into it, it's like uh, the King of Comedy, an old movie. It's like straight up a remake of that with almost just the Batman IP used. I haven't seen that, but... It's old Robert, De- funny enough, Robert De Niro. Oh, I have heard of this. Yeah, yes. it's like that in Taxi Driver. It has very, a lot of similarities to Taxi Driver where if you take the Joker out of it, it still works as a movie. It is still just a crazy dude who, if he was high enough on his own scheme in his head, could get this kind of a following. And it, it, it has a story in a character arc and like a whole developing plot that makes sense when it comes to fruition and he becomes the Joker. Like this yeah. dude can't survive in this society and all these things. That happened to him, and from what they what they say in Folly Do is that he they basically just get rid of his whole character arc and character growth that he had in the first movie. He just goes back to being like, "Oh, I'm not the Joker. I'm not blah blah oh. blah," and all these things. Weird. So yeah, that does. It's sound just kind of it's a just weird out. that they kind of get rid of that. So yeah, I'm, I know there's always dudes coming. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need to tell me, man. No, nah, every but, time. But we can't end there because I got to go get to dinner with Sydney. So that's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that there weren't too many technical difficulties today. That's pretty That's nice. But other than the microphone. Yeah. It's all good. Cut in and out, but. but anyways, everybody, thanks for watching again. Uh, I know obviously not too many people are watching these yet, but seriously, if you want, if yet. you want me, if you have some recommendations and you want, there's something that you want me to watch and me to check out, leave it in the comments. Uh, give me a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, just a little feedback. It's nice. It's great. So. I'm taking feedback now. Oh, okay. Cody's changed. I He's now taking feedback. The security guard's running. What's going on? Shit's going down. <laughs> oh, just fuck. kidding. Building a little bit of suspense. All right. Everybody, have a good rest of your day. Thanks. <laughs>